Hey Matt 31, I had a question for section 3.4, number nine. So in this question, they give us two functions. They give us an F and a G, and they're asking us to find the domain for each of these operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And they want us to write our domains in interval notation. Okay, great. So we've talked about this before, but it's great to repeat it. There are three domain issues that you're gonna run into in math. All right, the first one is that you have to worry about when you have a fraction where your denominator is zero. All right, that's a bad news bear. They'll put a little sad face there. You also can't have a radical with an even index and a negative radicand. And when I say radicand, that means everything under the radical. When I say index, that's referring to, is it a square root, a cube root, a fourth root? And the last one, which we'll get to in chapter six, is you can't have a logarithm where the argument is zero or negative. So if any of those light up in this problem, we're going to have to address them. So if I take a look at my function, I have a, a polynomial here, really just the squared function. There are no fractions, no radicals, no logarithms. So the domain of f of x is all real numbers. There's nothing I have to worry about here, but I do have to address the fact that I have a radical here. So I want to make sure we're clear. The index here is 2. All right, and when I say that we have an index of two, right? I have an even index. That is going to be something I need to look at. So I have an index of two and my radicand is x minus five. So I need x minus five to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Because my, my main problem is I can't have a negative radicand. So I could have a positive radicand or a radicand that's actually equal to zero. And another way of saying that is I could have a radicand that's greater than or equal to zero. So if I finish this out a little bit, I have x has to be greater than or equal to five just for this function, right? Which would translate to a domain of five to infinity. And if you're not sure where I'm getting that from, let me just change pen colors for a moment. If I was gonna make my little x-axis here and I was gonna put the number five, I would put an open dot and greater than or equal to means go ahead and shade to the right. Oh, you know, I think I said open dot. Let me make sure I, I rephrase that. That's a closed dot. Anytime you go all the way to the right, that would be five, or excuse me, that would be infinity. So my interval is from five to infinity. All right, so let's see if we're gonna have to tweak any of this as we move forward. All right, so when I'm adding the functions, oops, let me go back to this color. When I'm adding the functions, right, I if I look at my sum of those two functions, Right? I don't have any fractions, I do have a radical, and I have no logarithms. So I need to make sure that this radicand, x minus five, is greater than or equal to zero. So there's my domain. All right, we had already found it. If I scooch down a bit, and I take a look at the difference function, all right, again, I can see here I have no fractions. I do have a radical. I'm going to make sure I check that, and then I have no logarithms. Okay, so I just need to make sure I do have an even radicand. I would need to make sure my, oh, excuse me, I do have an even index. I would need to make sure my radicand was greater than or equal to zero, and that's the same domain that we've been working with. When I look at the product function, again, no fractions. I do have a radical. All right, but I have no logarithms. So let me take a look at that rad radical. All right, I do have an even index, so I need to make sure my radicand is greater than or equal to zero. So that's that same domain we've been looking at. Now the quotient function is different. I do have a fraction. All right, I do have a radical, but I don't have any logarithms. So there are two domain issues I'm gonna need to address here. So we know that our, from the radical, we knew this domain because we've seen it pop up already in here. We knew the domain from the radical was five to infinity, but the fraction introduces something new. 
because in a fraction, you can't have your denominator be zero. Oops, I moved that. Let me scooch this back up. All right, so in a fraction, I can't have my denominator to be zero. So let's solve this. If I have to figure out when is my denominator zero, all right, I would square both sides and I would get x minus five was equal to zero. I would add five to both sides and I would get x was equal to five. So what that's saying is I cannot plug in five to this function because if I plug five into this function, it would zero out my denominator. So where my domain was initially including five, right? Because I have this fraction in here, I need to exclude five from the domain. So that's why in my domain, this five has a parentheses. It's coming from the fact that I have a fraction, all right? And that if I were to plug five into the, this, this quotient function, it would zero out the denominator, and I can't do that. So that's why, particularly for these quotient functions, you really got to be careful with your domains. All sorts of things can be happening. All right, thanks so much, gang. Bye.